putting yeah. their life in somebody's yeah. hands and it could be crazy. Oh wait, yeah. we have Trump. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in Germany, I did really, I kindly asked the people I was talking to, would you please take Trump back? He's from Germany. You can have him back now. And they all said no. Also the political um, atmosphere in many of the European countries is changing. Like we have this uh, problem with immigrants. That I mean, the European Union is fencing up its border and letting people drown in the Mediterranean. Sea. Well, people from Africa and from Syria where the war is I mean of course oh, they wait. How, how are the wars happening yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, so many parties who got involved so many parties who yeah. so uh, didn't want isn't, the people isn't, itself isn't, decide on their government isn't America in all of these wars isn't we America causing yeah. all of these immigrant people leaving their homes is not America in the middle of Israel, Syria, Palestine, Iraq, Iran? Isn't America in the oil companies in the middle of Africa? And so is England and all the rest of what are they called, the five friendly nations. All of them in cohorts in all of these nations to get resources from these people as they run yeah. them off their lands and yeah. destroy their lands and water? Yeah. And That's, then, so now it, you have the refugee problem of no, people but, but you destroyed the land. But what, I'm, what I mean by problem is that our governments are so um, much trying up, fencing up the borders yep, yep. and not letting any refugees mm -hmm. in and, yeah, contributing to all the problems. I mean, getting all, all the wealth mm -hmm. out of those countries, um, but then just trying yep. to keep people out of the country when they come and seek asylum or seek um, mm -hmm. whatever jobs we know um, we, and we the atmosphere in, in, in Europe and they're keeping our own people out yeah. remember mm -hmm. people in Mexico Nicaragua yeah. El Salvador yeah. South America those are our people they're native to this country mm -hmm. anybody who came in a boat don't belong here and they have no right to make immigration laws in my country oh wait Trump can get back on his boat so I, I really have a lot of issues because right now all of these friendly European countries are destroying these people's homelands and they're leaving them without the resources to live in their own countries and then keeping them out of the countries where they're trying to find refuge. Seems insane to me. That's what government does. Who controls the media? Who controls the story? If you do not control your own media, somebody else controls it. And you can tell any person something five times and they will believe it, no matter if it's true or not. It is a process, it's a military strategy that has been used across the world to change a narrative and to change a story. And people are actually changing the history of the world to adapt to it. So now they take this history that's not true and spreading it out and people are saying, wow, what's mm -hmm. happening around us? And so who controls the media? Who controls the world? Mm -hmm. And so what is your media system? Who is controlling it? How is it controlling? Mm -hmm. Just like you said, I'm not too sure about whether or not to put this article in. I was like, why not? Media is so important. It's mm -hmm. the core of everything because who controls the media and who voices the story mm -hmm. is in control of the world so what's here on Standing Rock and what has happened and what has happened since mm -hmm. can only be really told by us who were there at Standing Rock mm -hmm. who were at the camps and I tell everybody I said you know with all the propaganda that was put out there with all the because you know the oil companies bought up the newspapers and the TV stations and so all of the press that went out it's like who told these stories none of this stuff happened so now we are trying to recoup and saying this is what really happened and so I tell people nobody can take away what I seen with my own eyes and what I seen with my own eyes was a unity of the world what I see with my own eyes is every religious group in the whole world standing together in one prayer. You tell me where that happened. The Muslims, the Hindus, the Sikhs, the Christians, the Protestants, they all stood in one prayer. Mm -hmm. That was amazing.
-hmm. Where else have you seen every race, culture, creed come together and stand for one thing? Mm -hmm. Where else has every tribal and indigenous and aboriginal person from across the world come to stand together? To me, Standing Rock was like a seed. It was like this little seed you put in the ground and it grows and this knowledge comes out and these young people grab it because they know there is something better in their lives, that they can do something better, that we can change our world to a better world, mm -hmm. that we could make sure our future has clean water, a good earth, a place for animals to live, a place where native plants and medicines grow, a place where you can walk out of your house every day and smell clean air. We have a right to that. Our young people have a right to that. And so this was a point where they could see that seed. And this seed only grows and spreads across the world now. Because people in the world know that their lives, there's not good things happening. And how do you make good things happen? Each person stands up to make a change in their own life. And then that change spreads. So people always ask me, well, how do we do this? And I say, pick up garbage. Start small, start simple. Plant a garden, plant some food, because the first act of sovereignty is feeding yourself. The first act of sovereignty is not going to the store, are not depending on a corporation to feed you, because they're feeding garbage. Feed yourself. Second, clean up your waterways and that can be due just by manual labor just going out and cleaning waterways third start being kind to each other really seriously start being kind to each other if you have people that are not eating in your community feed them it's to me it's really a simple act of humanity and and that's what i seen at camp and that's what nobody can take away from me I seen a place where we had free health care. I seen that where I didn't care if you're blue, purple, or orange, people stood together, helped each other. I seen unity. I also seen how threatening and how frightening that concept is for corporations. The whole idea that we could take care of ourselves rather than waiting for them to take care of us. And what I seen was an empowerment of the young people, where children stood up and they stood up in song and dance and ceremony from each one of their cultures and languages and way of life, and that they were proud of who they were. And that was the first key to me in change proud of who they were, no matter where they came from. They knew who they were. So I always tell people, no matter what happened, what I seen in camp, nobody can take that away from me. Anyway, so when the camps closed, the way they did, they used the same procedures that they did in Palestine, stopping food and water from going into the camps, forcing people out and then they took big bulldozers and crushed our buildings and put them into big piles and said, oh, these environmentalists left all this garbage, which was not true. They created these massive amounts by knocking down our buildings. And so after they all left, we went out and cleaned. We went out and cleaned everything. I just took everybody out to where the camps are. And to me, the land is better since the camps left. All the native grasses and medicines have grown back. There's so many native flowers there. Before the camps, we had a lot of noxious weeds and, and, and invasive weeds growing. They're all gone. The medicines are all back. The land is healthier. Mm -hmm. And so for me, nobody can take that from me. And everywhere that people left, they are changing their environments, their communities. What does that have to do with government systems? Everything. Yes, we do need a system. 
but right now I am still reaching and asking for what is that system? Because right now across the world, across the whole world, no matter what they call their system, it is not working. And the reason why it is not working is because corporations have taken over almost every country's government in the world right now. And to me, that is the key to everything. If you take out the idea of corporations, you can have a better system. But as long as corporations control your government system, you do not have a government system. That's just my own opinion. And so I'm still asking for which government doesn't have that in there. So government, make sure that your roads are repaired, make sure your schools are running, make sure there's codes and laws and policies for people to be governed by so that everybody is good, safe and healthy. That is the system of government. Now we have governments who are making laws, codes and policies to protect corporations. That is not for the people. If it wasn't so, Montesanto wouldn't be spreading the um, this genetic food source. Can you tell us a little bit about your uh, your trip that you're going to be heading out on? No. Yeah. Keep that under a hat. <laughs> so. I usually don't like to tell people where I'm traveling to till I get there, but I am leaving for Portugal tomorrow. I'll be going to the Boom Festival. We'll be talking to um, a large um, group of people on why Portugal should not go with their ordinance of fracking and offshore, offshore drilling. Uh, Portugal has one of the pristine beaches in the world. And if they allow offshore drilling and fracking in their country, they will destroy what little country they have. Right now, in the middle of Portugal, they grow these trees for paper. And the trees eat up all the moisture. And so when I was in Portugal last year, they had these great fires all over because they can't control the fires because they have a foreign tree growing in their country to produce paper and it's causing such haddock on their whole environment because corporations manage these trees and make the money off the paper. And so to me, Portugal is already an ecological damage. I am very honored to be able to go over there and speak because I am going to Tamara. And Tamara is an eco village that was created 30 years ago by a group from Germany and these people came in and what they did was they had a dream so they planted all these trees these fruit trees because they had this vision of where they can just go out and pick fruit and eat fruit from the trees so they planted these trees there was a, a natural spring there so they were able to create three lakes they planted the trees create three lakes and what happened was the whole biodiversity of their environment changed. From being in a semi-desert environment, they brought rain. Now where they live is kind of like a ecological paradise. They have trees and, and plants. All the native plants have come back. But what was surprising about this area is wildlife started coming back. And when they first got there 30 years ago, I, I believe the villagers around the area did not like them and did not want them there. Now the villagers are very happy that they are there because now their ecosystem has spread into their area. Their farms have become better. Their animals have become better. Their environments are better. And it is, it is an amazing area, but they are a product of, they only eat what they make. So they are a total uh, vegetarian diet they grow all their own food which they produce. They have, um, which I thought was amazing, this great big mirror they tilt every which way and it grills all their food. They have uh, uh, equipment to make their own biofuel. Um, 
there are no cars or anything in their area. They do have bikes and scooters, which is run on um, biofuel. But they've been in existence for, with eco bathrooms, eco showers, and they've been in existence for 30 years. The grandparents who were the original founders of this place are now raising their grandchildren. They set up their own school systems, and these kids are amazing. They teach these kids everything about the whole world, what's happening in the whole world. These kids speak many languages, and, and so I'm just, I was just enthralled at listening to the kids, because the kids did a play for us. You know, they have their music, their art, their dance. It's an amazing place. And so one of the things that the people at Tamara said was, that's nice. We have this little area. What good is it if the world don't know? So last year they started what they call the Spiritual Activist Gathering and they brought people from all over to sit down and start talking to each other about how do we do this across the world. So have people from Kenya and India and um, uh, Argentina, Bolivia, Chile, Nicaragua, Canada, of course America all of these indigenous countries and we sit down and talk about what works for us, what doesn't work, how do we help, what kind of technologies that's coming out on, on living with the earth. And so we'll be there in, for two weeks in a session mm -hmm. of sharing ideas. Because one of the things that we believe is if we have community helping community, we can change the world. If we have people helping each other, we can change the world. And how all of this started with Tamara is when they heard Standing Rock started. They went up on top of their hill and lit a fire. And they prayed every day while we were at the camps. And then they invited us over. And they've been very staunch supporters in prayer and ceremony. But they also realized that they have to stand up in their own country, which is now Portugal. So I'll be going over there to talk with um, and be greeted by the people of Portugal tomorrow. And you were going to actually visit, was it? I am going Columbus to East? Christopher Columbus's home. His home, where he was raised. Yes. I still have my thoughts to gather on that. Last year when I landed in Portugal, the minute the planes touched down, it just hit me. Oh my God, I'm touching down in the land of genocide. These are the people who came to kill my people. These are the people who killed men, women, and children. These are the people who came and destroyed my home and my land. And then I had to breathe and remind myself that these people of Portugal are not the same people. And yet, they are and so I still have to process this in my own mind because to us history is not that far away I have and my people have only had contact with white people since for 115 years not that long and so and I as I've told many people before I didn't even eat white people food till 1967 <laughs> and so adaption for me is a little bit slower and so I have to really process all of these things in my head because I am still indigenous to this land. I am a person who was taken from my family and put into boarding schools. I am that person that people took away from their families as they're doing to the immigrant children right now. I am that person. This is who I grew up to be. So now I think about every one of those children that are in those immigration camps. Watch out world, you're creating warriors. AC got me all riled up again. <laughs> it's like, it's like, who are you? That was one of the things about the camps. I know who I am. 
and the roots grow right out of my feet into the ground. I can tell you everybody and where everybody's buried for 2,000 years in every place. I visit my ancestors and my relatives' graves every day. I know my home. I know my land. And on the cannonball that nobody forget that is my home. I grew up on that cannonball river. I rode horses through that cannonball river and that is my home. And at this moment in time, I just buried my husband on that hill above the Cannonball and Missouri River, above where the camps, where my son lays, and my aunts, and my cousins, because it is my home. And so, despite all the wonderful water protectors who came to stand on my land, it is still my home, and it is still my land. Good dog and I will defend it until the day I die. And I am willing to give my life for that land. And the oil pipeline is not done. And it will not be done until every pipe is out of the ground. And we have only just begun to fight. They have never seen a force like us coming after them. And we are not afraid of any corporation, any government, anywhere in the world. Because I have prayer, I have ceremony, and I have my ancestors standing with me. See, I'm a bad person. And, and as we go through, and I hear about people, like you said, I will track them down and ask him, who are you? Because you can live in my country for 200 years and you still don't belong here. And you do not make rules on immigration here because you have no right. The reason why they can come into my country and destroy my country because they have no roots here. They have no roots that grow right out of their feet. They have no love for the land. Yesterday when I got up and I drove towards the camps, the first thing I seen out of my eye was that bald eagle sitting on that haystack. Uh huh. Then I went a little ways and there was the buffalo. And then there was the deer standing in the field. And there was the hawks. And there was the meadowlark singing. That is life. That is the life my great great grandchildren should see every day. That is what I want the world to see. And that is what I expect everybody who came to my river on the Cannonball to see. Right now, as you watch all the young buffalo, because you know they're kind of red now, all along the Cannonball River, it is the way it's supposed to be. And I want that vision for the future generation. They need to take their government and take it back to Europe and leave it over there. They need to leave my country. They can be here as long as they want and they don't belong here because they do not love the land. Mm -hmm. So, as far as Indian people go, you know that the Americans came in, they massacred millions of our people, killed every woman, man, and child. And then they gave us diseases. And then they took our children away and put us in foster homes and boarding schools and stuff. And do you know what year that ended? Hmm. 1985. Hmm. They continued to do hmm. medical experiments on our people until 1990. Hmm. They f did forced uh, sterilization on Indian women clear till 1990. Hmm. What American government do you guys know? Is that a good question? Or, I mean, I've, I've known about those things and I mean, I've never been a friend of government, so I've always <gasps> sympathized with, with people. Um, yeah, and then of course we've seen all the wars that have been started. Um, inequality, this has uh, increased. Um, but of course, there are many other people who believe in 
the government rhetorics about freedom, about all yeah, kinds of Yeah, but they're not even from here. And, Who tells the story? Who controls the narrative? That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So now we have woke up. Now we rise. Now we tell our own story. Now we don't let other people do our narrative. Mm -hmm. So if you want to hear about what happened at the camps, you come to us from the camps and we will tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. Many other people can create our narratives who were never there. And so mm -hmm. nothing has quit, nothing has stopped. We move forward. How do you move forward? So in Cannonball, we planted 350 trees. Moving forward is taking care of your community. We started mm -hmm. at the tip of the Cannonball River going down the Missouri and we cleaned our river. Mm -hmm. We picked up trash in the communities. We cut down dead trees. We are repairing our communities. How do you change the world? You get out and work and do it. Mm -hmm. War. We are at war. And war is a different concept to us. War means that we will work as hard as we can to improve our communities. We will work as hard as we can to improve our water. We will work as hard as we can to repair our trees, replant the earth, to be able to feed ourselves, because feeding ourselves is an act of sovereignty. To me, every one of this is war. It is not going to battle and fighting each other. It is the battle to live, and to do that, we plant, we grow, we rise. War is a different concept mm -hmm. to many people. To me, it's taking care of your community. Who controls the words? Because the words can set off people. A word can mean something to one person and mean totally different to another. And to me, the war means somebody is standing up for something and making a change. Mm -hmm. To me, it doesn't mean somebody is fighting each other like this, but somebody is fighting to make things better. Doesn't it still mean that there is a conflict and there is a struggle of power of, and that there are conflicting sides. But um, that, that is why it's war, because yeah. there is a, a entity here who believe that corruption, alcohol and drugs and this way of life is okay. Mm -hmm. And so your battle mm -hmm. is to heal them, to help them, to make them better, mm -hmm. That is a conflict that has to change. Yeah. And just yeah, I'm, I'm I'm still bothered by what I heard yesterday about about child and youth suicide, and I just wondered it, maybe that's so, a very so. But yeah. is that the norm? No, absolutely, it shouldn't be. It couldn't. It be. always it's has been the norm in the United States with Indian people. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know whether the numbers have changed over time or whether if this has been constant. Or it has been constant. From when the first time the Americans took us to boarding schools and they forbid us to see our parents. And then they dropped us off at 18 years old on the street and said, okay, you're on your own. Yeah. The loss of culture, language, tradition, way of life and family. the government system mm. and then you grow up with trying to figure out who you are where do you belong mm. why doesn't anybody love me or care about me mm. and that is my mother's age 
And then in my age, we were the remnants of all of those things. Then in my children's age, they were the remnants of what the heck happened here? And then in the age of our grandchildren in 2014, right, 2012, the world died as we know it as indigenous people. In 2013, the sacred red year rose and we were idle no more. In 2015, we stood up. In 2016, we said no more. And we are still rising because it is prophecy.